All righty, 12 o'clock. We we'll started in child's pose today. Make your way onto your mat. Wiggle, wiggle those hips down to the heels. Bring the knees as wide or as narrow as you want. There's different ways to take child's pose. You can be comfortable with knees out wide or even inner thighs all the way together. Let the fingers reach forward on the mat. Let the head drop comfortably. Beginning to breathe into your child's pose, our first time lengthening the spine, settling down to the earth, sending some grounding, grounding energy from the base of the spine, your root chakra. Begin that ujjayi breathing. So we'll softly close the lips, breathe in and out of the nose, deep into the back of your throat, filling the lungs, going down into the belly. Try to lengthen the inhales and exhales. Today I'm gonna offer a short reading. It's a, it's a heartfelt, heartfelt offering. It's 12 lines, it's repeat after me. And so it's, it'll be quick, but it's a little repetitive. So you can repeat after me or just listen. May I be safe and secure. May I be healthy and strong. May I be happy and peaceful. May I know freedom. May you be safe and secure. May you be healthy and strong. May you be happy and peaceful. May you know freedom. May all people be safe and secure. May all people be healthy and strong. May all people be happy and peaceful. And may all people know freedom. Walk those hands over to the right. We'll take a side body stretch, breathing life into the right side of the, or the left side of the arm, left side of the body from pinky to hip. Let the head go back to the mat, wherever it's comfortable. You don't have to hold up the head. Breathe from the pinky through the shoulder, opening the rib cage down to that left hip. And then we'll walk the hands through the center, take them over to the left, reach through the right fingertips. Keep that right hip from lifting. So keep settling the hips down, but reaching forward with the right hand. Feel the outer edge of the shoulder open up, the rib cage open up. And come back to center, push yourself up. We'll sit on our shins for a moment here. So bring your inner thighs together. And then we're gonna take a shoulder stretch. So we'll start by swinging the right arm across the body, straight, straight right arm. You're gonna hook it with the left forearm. Pull the right arm towards the body. The stretch is on the outer edge. And then keep your low ribs pulled in, core engaged, and be tall in the back of, or through the spine. And then we'll release arms, switching. So we might want to swing the left arm out to the left and then across the body over to the right, hook it with the right forearm, and then breathe into that length, or length into that spine.
All right, release the left arm. We'll bring the fingertips behind us. We're going to press hands or hands into the mat, fingers face forward. Inhale, lift the hips, let the head drop back. Breathe into those quads and the front of the shoulders, opening the throat. And then drop back the hips to the heels. And we'll lift up all the way onto the shins this time. I'm going to turn the face of the camera. We'll do gate pose. So we'll bring left or right foot out to the side, straighten into right leg. Did I say left? Right foot out to the right. Let right hand go down the leg. Inhale, left hand sweeps high and over to the side of the room. Keep reaching with the left fingertips. Let your gaze be wherever is comfortable. And then an exhale gently lowers left hand to the left side of your body. And then right hand reaches up and over. A little cartwheel. Keep pressing the hips forward, balancing on the shin. And inhale back to center, drop right knee. And we'll switch to the left side. Bring left foot straight out so you're in one plane here. Left hand goes down the body or the leg and right hand with an inhale reaches up and over. Getting into the groin here, getting into the side body. And then same thing, gently lower right hand to the side of your right knee and left hand cartwheels over to the back of your mat or I guess right side of the room. All right, come back to center. We'll drop down into tabletop and take some cat cows. So let the hands or the wrists drop under the shoulders, knees under hips. Inhale, drop the belly, gaze goes up. Exhale, arch the spine with the movement. Start from the base of your spine and then the movement goes up to the head. Your head's the last thing to move. You can close the eyes here. Take these at your own pace. I like to bend into the elbows to move through the two poses. Shoulders out of ears when you're up in cow pose. And let the head hang heavy when you're in scared cat. All right, we are going to tuck both toes, place those shoulders getting ready for down dog. So her hands right under shoulders about or a little bit in front. Lift those knees two inches off the mat, hold there. Feel those low abs really engage and then those same low abs lift your hips high to the sky. Then push the hips back, lower the heels down dog. First down dog, so pedal out the feet here. Breathe into the back of both legs. Walking the dog, so pedaling the feet and dropping the knee across the body. Any way you like to get into down dog, we'll cover foundation for a little bit. So make sure your fingers are spread wide. Try to get the whole surface area of the hand onto the mat. Strong through the shoulders. So as if you were gonna support all your weight with just your Hands and shoulders, you would want them to be rolled in, armpits rolled in to face each other just a little. Pull the belly button up and in. Try to keep those low ribs tucked in and down dog too. And then we'll look at the space between our hands very slowly on an exhale. Tippy toe to the front of the mat. Keep those hips really high. We meet in ragdoll pose. We're going to let the belly hang out on the thighs, bend the knees really heavy, and release the low back by swaying side to side. Shake out that head yes and no. Ending on a yes. You can straighten into one leg at a time if that feels okay on the back of the legs. And slowly we'll roll up one bird right at a time. Let your head be the last thing to come up and then take some shoulder rolls. 
pulling the shoulders up with inhales and letting them fall down with exhales. Go both directions, any pace that feels good. And then we'll meet in mountain pose at the top of the mat. Ground down through the bottom of both feet. Hands shine forward, next inhale, hands sweep overhead. Exhale, hinge out the hips, hips forward fold. Keep that spine long until it's about parallel with the floor and then release hands. Next inhale, half lift, shine the heart forward. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, plank pose, hold plank here. If you need to drop to your knees, that's okay. Otherwise, holding plank, strong through the wrist, tuck your tailbone down in towards the back of your mat. Energy reaching through your heels and through the top of your head. You're strong here. Lift right foot off of the mat. So lift those right toes. And then option to lift left hand as well, like you're reaching forward to shake someone's hand. Nice job, return both left hand and right foot. Same thing other side, start with left toes, reach them off the mat, using tons of strength here, core work, and then lift right hand in front of you, like you're shaking someone's hand, balancing on left wrist and right toes. Nice job, return everything to the mat, lower down your belly all the way to the mat, let your hands be under the shoulders. Take the feet, tops of the feet to the mat, kick them into the mat a little bit. And then we'll inhale, Cobra Pose. Arching from the spine, leading with the chest. Try not to use your hands too much. And exhale, release. Stay down on our bellies for a couple breaths. And then we'll come back to center. If you left, if you took one ear to mat, bring hands under shoulders. This time we're going to come all the way to Sphinx pose. So coming up onto those forearms. And then from here, you grip onto the floor to pull yourself forward and lift with the chest again, lifting with the top of the head to the ceiling. And then from here, we're going to take a quad stretch. So we're going to move our left elbow a little bit more center line to balance us. Reach your right foot towards heel or heel towards your body. Grab that right foot and we're stretching the right quad. Probably feel an opening in the front of the right shoulder as well. You can really grab onto the foot, whatever feels comfortable, any grip just trying to get the quad stretch. So maybe bring the knee more center line to your body as well. And then we'll release, switch left forearm with right forearm. Reach around and grab the left foot with left hand. Move into it slowly, find where you're nice and stable on that right forearm. Press your heel towards your glute. Try to keep hips square to the mat, and then maybe bring that left knee in towards center line a little bit to keep the stretch in the uh, quad and not on, on the knee. All right, nice job. Release left foot, press back to child's pose. So let the hands come under the shoulders. Press back to his child's pose. Feel that low back counter stretching to go slow. And then we'll come back through tabletop, meet in down dog. Press those hands into the mat, lift the hips high to the sky, stretch into the back of the legs. Heels don't have to be touching the mat, but they want to. They're reaching energy down. All right, inhale, right leg goes high to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, plant the foot. We'll come to a low runner's lunge, so drop back knee. Breathing into left hip flexor. Press into this right kneecap to lift the chest if that's accessible to you. Option to stay down with both hands on the mat. Another option for low runner's lunge, which I don't usually get into, but it's an option, 
is actually to tuck left toes and lift the back knee. Um, usually I have us keep left knee on that, but this is just another way to do lower runner's lunge. Breathing into the left hip flexor, that's the stretch here. All right, if you lifted left knee, return it to the mat. Next exhale, half splits. Send your hips back towards your left heel. Breathe into the right leg. Walk your right heel forward a couple inches, trying to keep your hips stacked right on the knee. Inhale to find length in the spine. Exhale, fold chest towards chin. Maybe have that block or prop underneath you to keep the chest lifted. All right, next inhale, come back forward all the way to a high lunge. So you lift back foot or back knee off the mat, sweep the hands forward, high lunge, warming up the legs. Put both hips are squared to the front of the room. Make sure you can see right big toes. So track that right knee out. And then exhale, plant the hands around the right foot. Let them land where they would be for your um, transitioning for your little vinyasa flow. Step right foot back to the left. You can exhale to your belly or half push up. Inhale to cobra pose or up dog. And exhale, we meet in down dog. Let's inhale, bring that right foot back up to the sky, staying on the right side. Bend the right knee and drop the foot over to the left, breathing into this hip a little bit. If wild thing is in your practice, you can flip the dog, bringing right foot towards the mat. Otherwise, we're just building strength through the shoulders and opening up the hip from the right side. Really trying to drop that foot over to the left. Look under your armpit, your left armpit, trying to find that foot. If you're in wild thing, make your way back to three-legged down dog. And we'll return right foot to meet left on that. Inhale through the nose, maybe the open mouth exhale. And then we go to the left side, inhale, left leg goes high to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, plant the foot between the hands, low lunge. So we're really opening up the hip flexor on the right side. You can take low lunge with right knee on mat or take this option today of lifting the back knee for this low runner's lunge. Either way, build it, or when you inhale, bring length into the spine. And then exhale, let gravity get you a little deeper into the stretch. All right, next exhale, we'll send hips back towards right heel, half splits. Flex your left toes towards the face. Breathe into the back of the left leg. Inhale to find length. And exhale, fold. All right, next inhale comes forward all the way to high lunge. Lift the back knee off the mat, sweep the hands forward. Grounding through left foot, you're on the ball of the back foot. Track that left knee out just a little bit. We want to be strong through that left leg. All right, plant the hands, step your left foot back to meet the right, take it through your second vinyasa, skip it and meet me in down dog. Always have option to take rest, moving right to down dog or even taking child's pose. All right, we inhale that left leg high again, one more time. Left leg goes high, bend the knee, drop the foot in the air over to the right. Either you're looking under your right armpit trying to find that foot or you're flipping your dog, letting left foot come to mat. 
Inhaling the hips to the sky, left hands reaching overhead or to the front of the room. Keep opening that left hip, strong through the shoulders. If you're in wild thing, return back to three-legged down dog, and then we'll drop left foot to meet right. Next exhale, bend the knees, look at the space between the hands, walk step or hop to the front of your mat. When you get there, inhale, half lift, shine the heart forward. Exhale, forward fold. We're gonna take a stretch here, getting into the back of the legs. So you're gonna pick up your feet and place your hands, your palm under the foot. Or if you don't like that, you can grab your big toes with the two fingers, middle and pointer. Whichever grip you have, if you need to bend the knees to get into it, that's, that's okay, bend the knees. And then try and straighten into the legs. Lift your head, hang towards the floor. If you can, inhale to find a little bit of length in the spine. And then exhale, use the grip of your hands, the grip of, or the strength of your arms to pull you deeper into this stretch. If you're in gorilla pose, roll the weight a little bit into the balls of your feet. So you're pressing like you're standing on your hands. All right, nice job, release out of that. And inhale, we'll reverse swan dive all the way up to standing. Go slow, try to keep a straight spine. Hands come overhead. Exhale, hands through heart center, down by the side. Next inhale, sweep those hands back overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, shine the chest forward. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back through your vinyasa or meet me in down dog. So something I want to clarify is you either do one or the other. You either exhale chaturanga and inhale up dog with thighs off the mat, or you exhale all the way to your belly. Inhale cobra, and then exhale through tabletop to down dog. So that's just to be safe on the spine. You don't want to go from being on your belly all the way to an up dog. All right. Next inhale, right leg goes high to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, plant the foot, come up high lunge, deep bend in the right knee, we're on the ball of the back foot. Let the shoulders rest out of the ears. So if you feel like you're really reaching up with the fingertips, let the shoulders come back down. And then we're going to lift up so our left knee is parallel to the floor, standing on the right foot. So even if you want to do that again, to try and move, do it in one swooping motion where you land woo, with left shin parallel to the floor. And then our next movement is warrior three. So kick left heel back, right hands reach forward, or both hands reach forward. Grounding through that right foot, strong warrior three. Squeeze your glutes together. Reaching energy through that left heel to the back of the room, strong in both legs. Next inhale brings us back to that same position, left shin parallel to the mat. And then we bring left ankle to right knee. We're going to do a standing figure four or go all the way to toe stand. So this is where having like a chair next to you or something to help you prop if you want to move down to toe stand or holding that strong figure four good. I see a lot, a lot of good, good standing figure fours and toe stands. So we're getting a glute stretch on the left side. Press that left knee away from you a little bit. If you're in toe stand, maybe the next move for you is bringing hands to heart center to test that balance. Really working that right foot and ankle muscles. All right, very slowly we lift back up. 
And then you're going to shoot that left foot to land on the mat for pyramid pose, about three foot distance here. So left foot goes back, heel to heel alignment. Bring the chest up. We can have hands out heart center. Inhale to find length. Exhale, fold over the right leg, pyramid pose. So try to keep that spine uh, long until it's about parallel with the mat and then you can release hands to floor. Let the, the spine arch a little bit, bringing the forehead to your shin, breathing into the back of the right leg. If it's okay on your ankle, one thing we can do in pyramid pose to release some of that ankle work that we just did is lifting and lowering the ball of the right foot. So you might have to bend into the right knee a little bit, but you can lift your foot off the floor, flexing toes back towards the face. And do it as much as you want and then go back to pyramid pose. All right, from here, inhale, lift the chest. We're gonna do one revolved triangle, get a little spinal twist. Left hand on the inside of right foot. Inhale, sweeps right hand open to the sky. Chest goes over to the right. Inhale to find a lot of length in that spine. Breathing into the IT band on the right leg. Keeping those hips high. Nice job, plant both hands on your mat, framing right foot, step right foot back to meet left. Take it through your vinyasa or we meet in down dog. Taking any in between poses you need. All right, sitting up for left side. Inhale, left foot goes high to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, plant the foot, come up high, lunge. Deep bend in that front knee, make sure that knee's tracking out. We're gonna be doing a lot of poses on the left foot now. So you really wanna be grounded on the left side. We'll inhale, bring left or right shin parallel to floor, stand up, straighten into the left leg. Relax the shoulders out of the ears, but keep those arms engaged. So fingers reaching up, triceps engaged, and then slowly lowering to warrior three, kick right heel towards the back of the room. Strong warrior threes, try to keep those arms long, gaze in front of you on something not moving, you're dristy. Square those hips to the floor. Ujjayi breathing. And knee comes back parallel to the floor, bring that right knee back up. And then figure four, standing figure four, or toe stand. Ooh. Feeling the fatigue in the left ankle as we're doing a lot of balancing on that side right now. Find your balance and then move into standing figure four, getting that right glute or all the way to toe stand. Maybe noticing one side feels a little bit different than the other. Sometimes we have just the way we sit while we're driving or eating or on the couch can throw our hips off. Maybe we'll tighter on one side than the other. Keep breathing into that right glute. And then very slowly, if you're in toe stand, lift yourself back up. From figure four, we're gonna drop the right foot behind the left foot this time. Setting up for our second pyramid pose, this time on the left leg. So we straighten into both legs, back toes out about 45 degrees. We'll bring hands at heart center. Inhale to find length in the spine. Exhale, hinge up the hips, forward fold. Try to keep both hips square to the front of the room. Once you're parallel to the floor, you can release the hands. Let forehead come towards chin. Pull that belly button up and in. All 
Oh yeah, well we can lift and lower that left foot here if you like that too. You'd have to bend into the left knee a little bit to get onto that heel. It might not feel good for everyone, that's, so it's okay if it doesn't add anything to practice. And then we'll inhale with the chest, right hand plants on the inside of left foot. Inhale, sweep the left hand open, try to get the chest to face the left side of the room, reaching up from those left fingertips, trying to lessen the weight go going into the ground from the right fingertips, really reaching up from the left hand. And then plant hands on mat, take it through vinyasa or maybe in down dog. Take your choice. But use your breath, that's the most important thing to get you back to down dog. Don't try to rush it, we'll always meet in down dog. All right, let's go down onto our knees. We're going to move into um, puppy pose, so it's kind of like child's pose, but your hips are not back, your hips are lifted. And then you'll do the same thing where you walk the hands forehead forward, let forehead come to mat. Puppy pose, imagine a little puppy stretching its paws. That's you. So some, I've heard some people say that um, trying to reach forward with their fingertips and straighten into the elbows causes a little bit of pain. So have a bend in the elbows if that's more comfortable. It's just your joints, like the shape of your bones. And then from here, we're gonna walk our hands over to the right. So really reach through the left fingertips on this side and your right hand is more to support you. You can even lower the forearm on the right side. Breathe into that left side body from the pinky to the hip bone. Keep sinking that left hip back. So you're actively stretching. And then we'll take hands through center, get over to the left. This time breathing to the right side body. Still in puppy pose, so your hips are high. We're not back in child's pose, unless you much prefer that. <laughs> of course you can do it. Breathe into that right shoulder. Keep that hip pressing towards the back right corner of your mat. All right, come back to center. Make your way through tabletop to down dog. Gaze at the space between your hands on the bottom of your next exhale. Walk step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, hop, lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way to standing. Try to come up with a straight spine. Exhale, hands through heart center down by the side. Mountain pose. One breath there. And then inhale those hands back overhead. Exhale, hitch at the hips, forward fold. Really trying to take these uh, little vinyasa pose at your own pace. Inhale, shine the heart forward. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, take it through, chaturanga and up dog with your breath, we'll meet in down dog. All right, inhale, right leg goes high to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, plant the foot between the hands, come up warrior one. So hands come forward to the front of your mat again, or to the front of the room. It's like, more, it's like high lunge, but our back foot is down. We still have hips square to the front of the room. So pull your right hip back into its socket. Exhale, lower the hands behind you, gripping hands or elbows, pulling shoulders back and away. Next exhale, lower down, humble your warrior. Let the chest fall to the inside of the right thigh and release the head. You might have to adjust the feet a little bit. 
Keep pulling those hands overhead towards me or towards the front of your room. All right, release the hands. We're gonna take a long um, pyramid pose this time. So we're gonna straighten into both legs. Inhale, lift the chest back to center. And pyramid pose we did earlier with a short stance. We're gonna do pyramid pose with long stance this time. Grabbing that block again, or prop whatever you have, chair. Inhale to find length in the spine. Exhale, fold over that right leg. It should feel intense still, but it gets a little bit different angle. Just called long pyramid pose or wide pyramid pose. All right, we won't hold it for very long. You're gonna bend into the front knee, hop your left foot all the way to the sky, standing splits. Back of that right leg is nice and open, so you're reaching up with that left heel towards the ceiling. Standing splits, right foot. Nice job. And then we lower that back foot really far back. Cartwheel the hands open, warrior two. Left hand goes back, right hand goes forward. Inhale, kind of come up with the shoulders. And then exhale, settle the shoulders down, deeper bend in the front knee. We will exhale, extended side angle, right elbow, right kneecap. Left hand reaches up and over, reaching towards the front of the room. Your one long line on the left side. Strong warrior two legs. Inhale, reverse warrior, left hand down, right hand goes high to the back of the room. And then exhale, cartwheel the hands around the right foot. This is your chance to let those hands land right where you think you're going to need them for your next three poses. Exhaling through chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Maybe an exhale out of the mouth, releasing some heat. One more standing flow on the left side. All right, inhale, left leg goes high to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, plant the foot, come up, warrior one. Strong warrior one legs, back toes out at an angle. Front knee forward, track that knee out. Left knee goes out to the left. Pull this right hip back into its socket. That's a big one to keep your hips square to the front of the room. Exhale, drop those hands behind you, grabbing whatever grip you like for humble warrior. Hands or elbows. Inhale to find length. Exhale, lower the chest onto the inside of the left leg this time. I usually end up having to readjust my back foot. I move my right heel a little bit out to the right. Allowing that chest to lower. Trying to keep the left hip from popping out to the left. Strong, humble warrior. Release any tension in the neck. You don't have to hold up the head. Belly button up and in. All right, release the hands. Coming to that wide pyramid pose. A little bit different here. So straighten into both legs. Might have to grab that prop to lift the chest. So just remember where your feet were for pyramid pose and try to be wider. Inhale to find length, lift the chest over the left leg. Exhale, fold. Let that forehead come back down towards left shin. Really intense stretch on the back of the left leg. Again, releasing any tension out of the head or the neck. All right, bend into that left knee, hop your right foot all the way to standing splits. Grounding through the left foot. You should maybe even feel a little tingling from that stretch. Kicking right heel towards the ceiling. Keep those hips square to the front of the room. All right, lowering back foot, setting up for warrior two. So try to let that foot land exactly where it would need to be for warrior two. So you're nice and smooth in those transitions. 
Deep bend in front knee, warrior two legs, bring that left knee back out where it's supposed to be. Exhale, extended side angle, left elbow, left knee, right hand reaches up and over. Legs working here. We're gonna use the core to lift us to reverse warrior. Inhale, left hand up to the sky, right hand down the leg or wraps around the back. And exhale, cartwheel the hands to the front of the mat. Make your way through vinyasa or take or just take the rest in down dog. All right, let's cool down a little bit. Bring it all the way to pigeon pose. So right knee to right wrist. Drop back leg. Really reach that left foot down your mat. Try to get right shin to the front of the mat before you fold down into pigeon pose. Push the hands towards your body to breathe some length into the spine. Open up that left hip flexor. And then this is a good time to roll this right thigh out a little bit. Thinking about rolling it, I think external, I can't, I'm not sure, just rolling it out. And then lower your chest down. We'll stay here for a minute, our first static hold. Let every exhale get you a little deeper into the stretch. You can be down on forearms, you can rest forehead on block or forehead on mat, making it your practice. If it hurts your knee, roll onto the back and take a figure four, supine figure four. There shouldn't be any pressure in your knee. All right, begin to lift the chest. We're gonna roll onto that right hip, swing the left foot all the way around till it lands on the outside of the right knee, coming to a little spinal twist. Gotta rearrange myself. So let that left knee stay bent in front of you. We are going to inhale, bring the hands overhead. Exhale, twist to the left. Let your right elbow hook onto left knee or anywhere on the thigh that feels good. Inhale, breathe the top of the head towards the ceiling. And then exhale, gaze over the left shoulder. Left hand right behind your back. Pressing your fingertips into the floor, your hand into the floor. Breathe into the stretch in the side of the neck. All right, come back to center with the chest. Go all the way, hands over to the right, lower the chest a little bit for just a tiny counter stretch. And then lift the chest back to center. Full expression of pigeon or fire log pose. Stack ankles and knees. Oh, this is an intense stretch on both hips at the same time. So I like to press my fists into the mat, lift the hips, try to get them to sit back down on the earth more evenly. And then if this might be the stretch for you today, if this is comfortable with a straight spine, you can begin to hinge at the hips, bring the hands to the floor in front of you. Getting a little deeper into both hips. Again, trying to keep the ankle and knees um, relatively in line with each other.
All right. Nice job. Press out of it. Um, before we go back to the other side, left side, we're going to come to frog pose. Since we're already down on our mats, wiggle those knees really wide. <clears throat> Press the inside shins into the mat. So you might have to come long, long way onto your mat or even getting um, a blanket under those knees. Start with your chest lifted. This might be the stretch for you today. Or you can lower down, play around with it. Move those hips forwards and backwards till you find a nice stretch. All right, begin to wiggle those knees back in towards each other. Really support yourself with the hands, taking some weight off of the knees. Go slowly, making our way back to down dog. Any little in-between stretches you need. Setting up for left side. Bring left knee to behind left wrist. Wiggle that right foot down the mat, straighten into right leg. Before settling into pigeon pose, let's bring the hands towards the body. Lift the chest, keeping those hips square, and then settle down. Rolling out that thigh again, if you liked that, um, taking that left thigh and just kind of rolling out, it out to the left or away from the center line. And then lowering your chest and body down. All right, begin to come back to center. Lift the chest, roll onto the left hip. Swing that right foot all the way around till it lands on your outer edge of the left knee. We're gonna get into that twist. So inhale the hands overhead and exhale. Left elbow meets somewhere on the outside of that right thigh or knee. Let right hand land behind you. Inhale to find length and exhale, twist to the right. Coming back to center, we'll take that little counter stretch, let those hands go over to the left, lower the chest. And then push back up. We'll stack ankle and knee for fire log pose. Getting both hips at the same time. Make your adjustments so that you feel nice and evenly seated through both sit bones. Stack your ankles and knees. And you can begin at any time to hinge up the hips. Let the hands come to the mat on the floor. Notice where else you're holding tension besides the hips. Maybe shake out the shoulders, release your jaw, soften around the eyes.
All right, press the hands up. We'll get out of that. Let's bring our legs nice and wide here. TDQ stretch, getting into one side of the back at a time. We'll start with left or right forearm. Bring it right down to the mat in front of you and then sweep it over to right shin. Let it land on the mat, on your shin, behind the shin. Everyone will be a little different. You inhale life into the chest, reaching up with the left hand and let the hand reach for the right toes. Try to wiggle your right shoulder in front of right knee or just supporting yourself with that right forearm wherever it lands on the body, on that right leg or on the mat. The stretch is in the low back on the left side. Gaze is wherever is comfortable. You don't have to feel like you're holding up the neck or any strain. So gaze wherever feels natural. And then we'll slowly release through center. Sweep the left forearm over to left shin or left side this time. Inhale to open the chest and right hand reaches up and over. TDQ stretch left side. So breathing into that right low back, breathing into the legs. All right, come back to center. We'll make our way onto our backs now. So you can bring the legs together, grab behind the thighs, roll down one vertebrae at a time, or make your way down any way you like. Lift the spine, meet the mat, and then hug the knees into the chest. Grab your forearms around the shins, hug those knees in as close as you can to the chest, and rock side to side. All right, we'll move into a spinal twist here. Let's drop those right knee or those knees over to the right. On the way down, lift those hips back up and towards the center line of your mat. Let the left hip be stacked directly on top of the right hip. Wiggle those shoulders a little bit higher up the mat. Wrap your left heel around the right leg. Cactus the left arm gaze goes left. Maybe bring your right hand to the left thigh. Adding some weight, really bringing out the spine here at the end of practice. One of a very deep stretch. All right, slowly come back to center. Find some symmetry in your body. Bring that spine back to neutral before taking the same thing other side. So you can get into supine twist left side however you like. I like to bring my knees to the chest and then drop them over to the side, um, but that might not be best for you. You might just drop both knees over to the left. I think the best way to do this pose, though, is to wrap the right leg of like the foot a little bit around the bottom leg. It adds some weight to that top leg. And then gaze goes to the right this time. Nice big supine twist. Okay, at this point, take any last poses that you need in your practice today. I'll give you a minute. So you could do like a happy baby, maybe get some reverse blood flow with plow pose or just meeting us in Shavasana, final pose of class. Slowly listen to the body. <laughs> Mm. 
And then we'll make our way. No rush at all. Make your way into Shavasana. We'll let the legs go long, toes roll out to the side, hands palm face up. Softly close the eyes with the chin tucked down just a little. Dedicating the next few minutes to yourself. That freedom that we, we want from the mental. Welcome to Shavasana. Invite movement back into the body by wiggling the fingers and toes. You can rock the head gently side to side. And then when you're ready, rolling onto your favorite side, going slow, using your arm as a pillow for the head. In this space, we'll repeat just the first four lines. I'll let you repeat the other eight if you wish. May I be safe and secure. May I be healthy and strong. May I be happy and peaceful. May I know freedom. And then gently push yourself up into that comfortable seated position, cross-legged, facing the camera, hands palm face up. You can gently close the eyes. All right, we'll inhale, bring those hands overhead, fingertips to touch. Exhale, thumbs down to your third eye center. Tapping into that energy source in the third eye, our intuition. For you, we're all connected. Thank you for showing up today. The light of me, season honors the light of you. Namaste.